I'm very happy. I'm pleased to have you with me, Will Gettings. What's good? What's good? How y'all doing? Everything's amazing, man. Well, I've actually always wanted to uh, come to Hawaii. Hopefully, I could come and do a show out there soon. Absolutely. We definitely got to make that happen. Brand new single. I know you also released a music video recently called Frago. Let's talk about the brand new hit and the brand new music video. A friend of mine named Jamel. You remember the, the app Clubhouse? So Jamel was on Clubhouse and he was someone that was, he went on there and was in a room with some some Brazilian art, uh, producers. And so these two Brazilian producers, Nox and Andre Nine, they sent me the track, they wrote the, the chorus. So then they went and they got two big artists, Tati Zaki and Predella to come on and bless the track and they did that and they kept my vocals on there and we just dropped it so i'm excited about that we were supposed to travel to brazil to go be a part of the video but it was around the holiday we wouldn't have been able to make it back because it was remember that whole covid scare i'm excited about this one i think this one's gonna be a big record what's that experience like for you you know when you're going into the process shooting a music video i'm so accustomed to and a lot of people are accustomed to seeing me just sitting on and playing guitar. Sometimes if I do anything other than that, people are so like, whoa. But for me, it's I, I really enjoy doing videos and stuff. It makes me makes me feel like I'm cool. <laughs> Music videos are fun and I just always have a good time just, you know what I'm saying? Just doing the acting out a song that I that I was a part of, you know, of the creative process. In regards to music, now I know that you've been around the industry for years and quite some time. You're from Trinidad and Tobago. You know, being being from there, you know, is there a big music scene out there? There's a big, there's a big Soka and Calypso. The biggest cash cow is, is Soka artists and stuff like that. And so for me, being from Trinidad and growing up in seeing hearing that music all the time and it being a part of who I am, my culture, I always have respect for my country and and for the for the native song of of my country. But for me, I am more than than just Soka, more than just Calypso. You know, you mentioned that you know you're a different artist. You like to you know, involve different things, different flavors of music and whatnot. Now, knowing that you're a different artist, you know, what kind of separates you from the rest of the pack? What sets me apart from other artists is I'm a gifted individual. I'm a real musician, you know, and when you hear them, there's a type of feeling that you get. The way that voice makes, it does something to you. Like, I feel like those people are gifted ones. I play guitar, bass, drums with my guitar when I sing acoustically. And how I approach music is what sets me apart. Growing up in Trinidad, then I moved to Nashville, Tennessee, Berkeley College of Music in Boston. And then I went to Atlanta for four years. I know I'm in Los Angeles, California. It's like, how are you supposed to tell me what my sound is supposed to sound like? It's like, I've experienced so many different walks of life. Knowing that you traveled all over the world, being in so many different places, do you have any favorite spot? that you've been to? Nashville. I feel like it was a great place for my parents to like raise my siblings and I, but my favorite place that I've been to in the world so far is Kenya. 2014, September, you created a Vine account. What can you say about the success? To be honest with you, a lot of people don't even know this on The Voice in 2014, right? So I was fresh out of college and I went on The Voice. I've always been a confident individual in my abilities. So I went on The Voice and I, I was like, okay, this is going to be what everyone finds out of who will get into it it was i had like 1500 followers on instagram and i had like probably like 500 followers on vine because i had just started doing little vines and stuff i just went on the voice and i was like this is what's gonna take me over the top and i kind of put the voice on a pedestal and to be honest i didn't make i didn't make the the episode i didn't make the show none of the judges turned around for me pivotal moment in my career because that knocked me on my ass and i was just like yikes like i cried man a freaking 23 year old young man i cried and i was like i kind of stopped doing music for like a week just to kind of reset myself and really be like am i supposed to be doing this like i thought i was so good and i thought this was my destiny and I thought that was going to be so important in my career it didn't work out for me you ain't even really gave this a fair try yet You've done it here and there and you expected success, but you haven't put in the consistency. And then a week after that, I literally just started doing Vine videos every day. And all it took was one of them to take off. And then everyone was like, yo, who is this guy? And then the more consistent that I was, everyone was like, boom, boom. Everyone was just like, yo, who is this dude? Like kept revining me. A lot of big people were, were showing love. You know what I'm saying? The Shawn Mendes and, and the Megan Trainers and all those people. And yeah, that's that's something that, that catapulted my career because of the consistency of just constantly doing videos. But I just was, I just saw Vine as being something that was gonna allow people all over the world to be aware of who i was i don't come from wealth and i don't come from 
any kind of uh, inheritance or, or I mean, not to say silver spoon, but I don't have, I mean, I didn't have any of the things that automatically make someone vine, just something that, that helped me become Will Gittin. So I'll always have love for Vine. It, it, they, I remember they made me the face of the app for a little bit. Vine always will have a special place in my heart for what it did for, for my career. You know, these days I'm still going hard on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all these things. Man, I've been doing this stuff for, for like a decade. You mentioned you've been doing this for more than a decade, over a decade. What's been your enjoyment in music? And so I've learned to just enjoy the journey. There's a lot of lows that I experienced. Enough lows for someone to completely give up, even with being as talented as I am. I'm just going to continue to do that every day and, and just know that at some point it's going to be like a, a flick of the switch and it's going to all happen. What are some things that keep you motivated and what do you think has been the key to your success so far? Consistency. And the other key to my success is actually my brother. He had a huge like influence on on me even becoming Will Gittin. Before I knew I was gifted in guitar, he used to always encourage me to practice and to and also producing most of my music. Every time you hear the Junior, that's my brother producing that. And not only has he been influential, he's been he's my business partner. You know what I'm saying? We own an LLC together going to own a whole bunch of other businesses and, a, and eventually a label. There's been a lot of things that, that hasn't worked out in my life as far as, you know what I'm saying, people letting me down, broken promises, always stay true to that has been my big brother. And my family, you know what I'm saying, my father is a huge inspiration. He's, he's the one that I, I emulated when I was younger, seeing my dad do all the things in music. And, you know, he just taps in every now and again and tells me how proud he is. And, and that stuff really matters. And you touched on earlier that you went to Berkeley School of Music. Mm -hmm. What was that experience like for you? A very essential part of my musical career. Like a bittersweet kind of thing because the school didn't really show me any kind of extra. Like, they didn't show me any kind of, like, love or, like, you know what I'm saying, nurturing. The only time you get the best of, of Berkeley's love and appreciation is, is after you become who you, you're going to be. If Kanye West went to Berkeley before he became Kanye West, they would have just treated him normal. And then after he became who he was, Berkeley's own Kanye West, this, this and that. And Berkeley's really big on how they're being represented. So if you're doing a good job in, in, in your career and stuff like that, Berkeley wants to attach their, their brand to that success. At the time I was in Berkeley, I was just now starting to do music, to be honest with you. I still had to discover a lot, still had to figure a lot of stuff out. So remember when I told you back then, I just, I haven't access to certain things. There's a lot of people that had access to things before they got to Berkeley, they've been doing it. Berkeley was my first time being like, wow, I, I really feel like I could do music as a career. All the people that are playing for some of the biggest artists in the world, uh, my friends, people that I did shows with in Berkeley, people uh, that I saw every day and just dapped them up and was like, what's good, dog? So that's cool, even though I just feel like I'm not going to reap the, the, the positives of Berkeley until I become who I, I'm going to be. I still will give it credit for the environment it provided. I was in an environment that breeded me, that encouraged me to, to literally just soak up everything i was a sponge at book that guitar I honed in on my guitar skills because i was so inspired man so yeah the, the environment that book has is something that the actual institution was not something that was that was very helpful i would say but overall the environment top tier and life-changing for me i used to be a exceptional athlete and i had the athleticism and a lot of it, the skills to, to be a player in the NBA or NFL or every, anything that I wanted to be because of my athletic ability. It's kind of a touchy subject because even with the talent that I had, I went to a school that one of the, the coach, the main coach did not, was not fond of me. He didn't like me and didn't want to play me. Always wanted to, to, to put me lower than I knew I saw myself. And to be honest with you, that, that has kind of scarred, not scarred me, but always in life trying to, to to prove that I'm at the level that I might practice every day, basketball and other sports. And I wanted my parents to invest in like AAU basketball, you know, the summer sports and stuff so that you could get extra looks from colleges. There's no basketball goals in Trinidad when I was growing up. Like I never even shot a ball till I came to America. And my parents didn't understand, hey, if you put your kid in these summer sports and you, they could get a scholarship and they could go to college for free and this, this and that. If I would have played sports, I wouldn't have been doing music.
And I think that sometimes God intentionally does certain things. I'm glad that it worked out the way it did. You know, sometimes you dream and whatever you're dreaming is not what you're meant to do. So it's the best thing to do is just live and experience different stuff and figure out what you put on this earth to do. Knowing that you've been having quite this success, what is something that you wish you would have known when you first started out in your career? I wish I knew earlier the same thing I said, which was like I needed to stop because when I first started doing music, I was always about, man, when I get to success, when I get to this, this is not the whole time. And I was not even realizing that I was a successful individual. I think anybody that's watching this, if you realize, if you're like, man, I want to be the best newscaster in the world like and we're on this time and, and this is real in this moment when you look back in the like say in five years and you look back at this this is going to mean so much to you you know because it was a part of your journey the thing about it is i feel like i'm never gonna that thing that i always thought was the final it's never gonna be a final life is is progressive it's expansive it's it you it's growth keeps going learning and i feel like growing and all those things it's supposed to be never ending so for me, my success, where I thought I was going to be at the age of 29 and what I wanted to accomplish before I turned 30, when I turn 40, that that's going to be a whole nother level than I could even think about. Because when you're younger, you're like 18, you can't even think past 25. When you get to 25, you're like, oh, shoot, I'm about to be 30. The more you grow, the more your, your goals and your dreams grow. I wish I knew earlier that i that it wasn't about the destination that it was about the journey i just wish i knew earlier to just man just just enjoy the ride everything is not going to be amazing but just enjoy life for everything throughout the process you know two eps 12 single since august of 2016 what has been some of the strategies of why you've done two eps and and the 12 singles and so that august 19th the first project i've put out my no filter project that project my, by myself i'm a, a stellar songwriter now but in 2016 like i only had probably 30 songs to my name you know sometimes when you you write by yourself you say you write 20 songs half of them are, are good and probably two like three or five of them are like really really good and the rest is just like man and i put that out and it was my brother's first project he ever produced and it was such a beautiful we we didn't have access to the right equipment we didn't have anything put that out and till this day we it's been the highest grossing project that we've ever put out of course we're gonna have more success and then when we realize wow people are really listening to our music without any label without any editorial playlisting and any connections blogs or anything no pr we literally just put music out there and people human beings felt it and they resonated with it and we just continue to do that every year we release at least something be honest with you in the year, last couple of years i've written and been a part of hundreds of records and i've been because i'm a songwriter i pitch for for other artists other big pop r&b country artists artists and that is a whole rat race in itself especially if you're not published and i've been independent in everything that i do it's it's good it's a timing thing man i have some songs coming out with the biggest artists in the world as a songwriter and for me with this island project and everything i made a bold statement earlier this year i said i'll be one of the biggest artists of 2022 and i still stand by that because i'm confident in where i am right now i'm confident in my ability that this is my time and that god has for me i'm declaring it for myself you know i feel like what i have to offer people is is something that the world hasn't seen. I'm just excited, you know? It started in, in 2016, 2022, that, that is really about to start taking off, so I'm excited. Mention about that biggest project that you created that blew up and which was successful. Talk about that project and why you felt it was so successful. And as far as the new project that you're working on, I know you, you I know you don't want to name a, a few a big artists, but you know, if you could, you know, who are some of the artists of your project that you're gonna be working with? Mohammed Tanasha Donna, my stuff as a songwriter uh, that I wrote uh, with some friends of my AJ and Drew Castle Tank single. So the R&B singer Tank, we have his single and it's called Slow. So you get you get the first first take on that chris brown's project that's something that was a goal of mine to get some songs on and i, I i'm confident that with whatever the track list is that i'll have at least a couple on there actually i have something pending with bieber that i did with my good friend breland it's really just a waiting game but i know that every everything the timing of everything is, is going to literally be is, is going to be god's doing and i, I i'm not even st stressing it. i don't think about these things i'm just worrying about but what I'm what being the best of my best version of myself every day I wake up and I'm excited to see all the, the hard work come to fruition in these next couple of months. And I think that this project is going to be like even more pivotal 
in my life that my first project. This is my chance to, to show the world who Will Gittens is. And I think this is a good introduction. I know there's been a lot of challenges and, and covers that a lot of people have done. You did the hours and hours challenge with a very special friend of yours. Renee the Barge, like we met on The Voice. I actually was talking about her the other day. That's, the Voice was an interesting experience, but what it did is it created some lifelong friends for me and Brene being one of them. Hit me up and she was like, yo, let's do hours and hours. I love that song. And I had actually just met Money Long like a couple nights before an event. I was going to do the cover anyways. And then when she hit me up, I was like, oh, nobody's done a duet with a guy and a girl with this song. And then no one's done it acoustically. Uh, we did the song and we filmed it. And I didn't think that it would, it would do as big as it did. I love everything that we do together. And I'm excited to see what are the things we do. I know you dropped your first album, Gemini. You've had a couple of big songs that kind of gained your fan base. A Day With You and Forget About You. I was heartbroken and I was sad that I was, and I was a 23 year old that just wrote a song that was real to me because of what was going on in my life. And I didn't know that it was going to end up being a song that people listen to when they lose a loved one or when they're in a long distance relationship, it helps them just lost a friend or a family member. And so I didn't think that that was going to be such a healing song for people, it brings healing for people. And I didn't, I didn't think that, oh yeah, they didn't, they just probably just trying to say something nice to me, but A Day With You and Forget About You are beautiful songs that people could listen to and feel comfort and solitude. Gemini, September of last year was, it's just something that I hadn't put out a project since 2018. So I was like, yo, I need to put some out to kind of show people an updated version of, of my ability, my, my songwriting. And the project is phenomenal. It's also a no skip versatility. Anything that I do is not going to sound like the norm because of who I am and how how unique I am. I uh, listen to these songs from that project. I think that's an amazing project. I know you have plans to go on tour the to US and Europe. Future plans, your future goals. Gold and platinum records as a songwriter and as an artist. Goals is to, to win a Grammy, multiple Grammys as a songwriter and as an artist. Shout out to my dad. Revamp or to write a song with him and have him be a part of He Wins a Grammy. It's, it's a fulfilled dream for him. Yeah, what's next for me is those in the near future. I still have a lot of family that live in poverty, not ideal situation. So my goal is to financially create businesses with my family to be able to fund that success, you know, within my family. You mentioned time it is everything. I'm so glad that we were able to get this interview done. Keep up the great work in what you're doing well. And, uh, you know, we can talk for hours, man. Pleasure to have you here and uh, wish you all the best, brother. Thank you for your time again, man. I'm, I'm glad we were able to, to finally talk and enjoy the rest of your day and take care. Appreciate you.